this is part two of the tutorial. We generated the file model.k and we are ready to uh, run LSDyna. So we go to start, all programs, LSDyna, LSDyna manager. This window opens up. If we put the cursor at any of these icons, then it's going to tell us what this does. So for example, this one, start LSDyna analysis. This one, start LSP post. We want to run LSDyna, so we click on this icon. We can browse for the input file. There it is. We can open it. And then we select number of CPUs that we want to use. So for instance, four. The memory, the default is good for small problems. For larger problems, we need to increase the memory. So let's say for this one, 20 megawatts at 20 million. And then we click on run. Once we click on run, this opens up. This is the progress of the run. And we're going to finish with normal termination. If we scroll up, we're going to see the version of the code that it was used, to whom it is licensed. If we scroll down, it's going to tell us timing information, CPU time, clock time, start time, and end time of the problem. If we close this window and we go to the directory where we had the input file, we see other files were generated by Elastina. Some of these files are binary files. Some of them are ASCII files. For example, D3Dump is a binary file, which is used to restart the problem. D3HSP is an ASCII file, which is echo of the input file, plus other useful information. And then you have D3Plot, D3Plot 01 and 02. These are the results file in which we can post process. Some of the other results file are ASCII files like GLSTAT, global statistics about my model, and the RC force file, which is the result and contact force. These are files that we asked for them in the input file. We can use them for post-processing. And other files which are generated ASCII files like message file and the status file. Now that we have the results, we are ready to post-process. That would be part three of the tutorial.